Hi there. Welcome on board today's journey through the pages of Jamaica Magazine. We'll find out how you can safely lose weight and tone your body. The magazine will also explore assistance available to children with spasticity. Stick around. These and much more will come your way right after this message. It just makes sense that while we make hay as the sun shines, we should also save for the rainy days. Because even as we all strive to rule our own destiny, life holds some inevitable and unexpected outcomes for which we should be as prepared as possible. Get the help you need now through the National Insurance Scheme. The NIS offers financial security when it's most needed to all gainfully employed or self-employed persons who contribute to this scheme. Whether it's loss of income due to injury on the job, sickness, retirement, and or death of a breadwinner, there will be help waiting for you and your family. So if you are over 18 years of age and working, visit your nearest Ministry of Labor and Social Security parish office and get registered under the NIS. Start making your contributions in order to reap the numerous social protection benefits when that rainy day occurs. Email prunit at mlss.gov.jm or call 876-922-8000-13 for more information. Exercise and a balanced diet does a world of good for your health and physical appearance. Among the benefits are staving off numerous diseases, looking and feeling fit. But we know it's not an easy task. So to help you do it just right, keep watching. Want this lean muscular physique and well-toned body framed for the beach carnival parade or just your regular dressed down or formal attire you want to cut the fat and develop that noticeable defined muscle and shape but not significant muscle size there's nothing wrong with any of that as long as you remember the most important thing is not a summer or designer body but rather a healthy body by doing efficient exercises and controlling your weight, you can expect to safely lose between 1 and 2 pounds a week on your journey to a more fit body. But doctors recommend that you should not lose more than 1 to 2 pounds per week. For many people, even this rate may be too aggressive in terms of dietary and exercise modifications. That body is not just going to come overnight. It's not going to come within two weeks or a month, depending, it all depends on the type of activity you do, how you do it. Within two months, if you stick to your exercise program and if it's done properly, you will see and feel results. Before starting any structured exercise program, however, persons should first consult with their doctor. The reason why we need a medical approval from our doctor is that a lot of us have pre-existing health conditions and some of us are not as fit as we think. For example, in Jamaica, four in 10 is hypertensive and they don't know it. And it's the same with diabetes, four in 10 and don't know it. And our stats tell us seven out of 10 Jamaican die from a chronic disease. We define physical activity by intensity level and the frequency in which we do it. Frequency meaning how often we do it per week. For example, two times per week or five days per week. The intensity is the energy in which we, which we use to perform the activity, meaning how hard you work out. There's three levels of intensity, low, moderate and vigorous. If you want to lose weight, the Ministry of Health recommends 60 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise five days per week. To lose and maintain weight, 90 minutes of moderate to vigorous exercise five days per week is recommended. There are two main categories of exercise, namely aerobic and anaerobic exercise. What this is saying that the body needs oxygen to break down fat that is stored in the body. All the calories stored in the body as fat need oxygen to break it down that is in the tissue. So if you want to lose weight, you must do the aerobic activity to burn that fat that we use as energy when we're doing the activity. So the type of activities are like swimming, running, dancing, it is normally done for a long period of time. When you decide to lose weight, you want results. Results keep you motivated and on track. 
Cardiovascular exercises are part of the aerobic category and they help you trim down by burning extra calories. While this helps shed excess fat and strengthens your cardiorespiratory system, it won't build the tone in your muscles that you're after. Now when we talk about anaerobic activity, it is activity that does not need oxygen. It's quick, it's fast, it's snap. So most of the time that activity will help to tone the muscles that we're looking for. But you cannot tone unless you know, we lose that fat. So you need to do the aerobic activity, then you do the anaerobic activity, which is like the weightlifting, the squats, the push-ups, the jumping, so that now you lose with aerobic and then you tone with anaerobic. Calories are the name of the game when you're trying to lose weight. Eat fewer calories than you burn and the scale will respond. Generally, um, we work with a 2,000 to 2,500 calorie intake per day for the general population. But for each person, their caloric requirements is different because we calculate it based on your specific age, your height, weight, gender, and how physically active you are. Females generally eat less because they carry less muscle mass than men and so they weigh less. The range is different. I, for someone who is very slim and short, then maybe 1,800 would be a safe amount to save for that person. But for men, 2,100 would be the lower end of the spectrum. You may create a caloric deficit, which will cause you to lose weight, but it's best to work with a balanced diet and exercise. A caloric deficit is when you consume less calories than what you're using for the day. So usually, persons try to cut their caloric intake significantly to lose a lot of weight at once, but consuming less than, say, 1,200 calories per day can cause you to have nutritional deficiencies, you can lose muscle and bone, and your body will also go into starvation mode so that you'll stop losing weight altogether. That's a no-no. The best way to slim down and tone up is to combine balanced diet and exercise. And avoid fad diets, such as low-carb, high-protein, or anything that deviates from a balanced diet. In Jamaica, we have food-based dietary guidelines that are specific to the Jamaican population, but it's based on the six food groups in the Caribbean. So we have food from animals, staples, legumes and nuts, fruits, vegetables and fats and oils. Losing weight at a rate faster than one to two pounds per week and regularly skipping meals can leave you feeling extraordinarily hungry so that you binge at the next opportunity, causing weight regain. Plan for three balanced meals per day, in addition to one or two healthy snacks. You want to include foods from all of your food groups. So say for example you're planning for lunch, you want to include either food from animals or a plant-based protein like beans or nuts. You have your staple foods like rice, bread or pasta. Your fruits and vegetables that you can include in a salad and you can put your fats and oils for example like in pear or avocado. Healthy snacks are low in fat, low in salt and low in sugar. So you can have a fruit or vegetables for example carrot sticks or you can use dried fruits and nuts. As a general guide, one serving of food from animals is the palm of your hand, a cup of rice is like your fist, and fats and oils is your thumb, that's one serving. Losing fat and retaining, or building muscle, creates a strong toned appearance. Do strength training activities that focus on all the major muscles and the entire body, upper, mid, and lower body. Plank is a good full body workout, which helps to build strength in your core, upper and lower body. Those that focus on the lower body include lunges, using the stairs, leg press and squat exercises that effectively work most of the major muscle groups of the butt, hips and thighs. Some examples of exercises to strengthen the mid-body abdominal muscles include the side twist, traditional crunch, bicycle crunch and exercise ball. You can also try other activities to sculpt your legs, tone your thighs and bottom muscles, waist and abs. Ensure that you hydrate properly. It is good to take, drink water before, during and after your activity so you don't get dehydrated. Don't wait until you're thirsty, just take your water with you and sip, little sip, as you go along. So make sure you work out at an intensity level that suits you because every one of us are at a different fitness level. Getting and staying fit is a lifestyle change, so you have to make exercise a part of your daily routine and eat a balanced diet daily for a happier, healthier you.
Did you know? The consequence of not exercising, consuming excessive sugars, trans fat, sodium and alcohol and smoking is that sooner or later you will become seriously ill? These are known causes of non-communicable diseases, known to damage critical organs in the body, rendering them dysfunctional, leading to premature death. Avoid the unhealthy habits, treat your body right, eat well, exercise and live longer, more productive lives. There is hope for children with movement disorder caused by muscle stiffness. Medical intervention is now available to these children in Jamaica and has been showing positive results. Find out more in this next feature. A mother or father's wish for his or her child. That he or she is happy, healthy, able and will achieve his or her full potential. Even in the face of disabilities, these aspirations are affirmed with extra care and the outpouring of love in support of children with special needs. And the children themselves, some not able to freely move due to a condition known as spasticity, have strong faith in their abilities. Spasticity or muscle toning is a type of muscle stiffness seen in children with neurological conditions such as cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy is a name that describes a group of condition where there's injury to the brain, the developing brain that occurs during pregnancy, in utero, at the time of delivery, or up until three years old. And it affects a part of the brain that controls movement, the motor section. With the varying degrees of cerebral palsy, some children may have issues with comprehension or understanding. Others have seizures and problems talking, swallowing, hearing, or seeing. Despite the struggles, the possibilities are bright for children living in Jamaica with this and other conditions that affect the ability to walk. Medical interventions are now allowing some disabled children to walk for the first time and for others to walk better, ultimately having an improved quality of life. I think what we have brought is a comprehensive approach to addressing the problem um, where all the medical professionals, including nurses, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, um, the surgeons, the rehabilitation and specialists and physiatrists, um, and the neurosurgeons and neurologists have come together um, working with the hospital, working with the pharmacists to try and solve the problems of each child individually. So it's not a one size fit all. So for example, in my specialties, some of them may need a surgical procedure on the lower back, which we call a dorsal rhizotomy, where we will um, resect some of the nerve or divide some of the nerves to allow them to move the legs more freely. Other options for treatment include injecting the muscles or around the nerves with medication that decrease muscle tone or muscle stiffness. These medications include phenol or botulinum toxin type A, Botox. Specialist teams at the Bustamante Hospital for Children and the University Hospital of the West Indies, along with partners from overseas, have been pioneering treatments for these children. The children are assessed. They're assessed by the physiatrists, um, they're assessed by the physiotherapists, and a diagnosis is made, and then a particular treatment is prescribed that's tailor made for that child's disability. Assistive aids such as braces, walkers, and other orthotic devices provide important support to children dealing with spasticity and the pain or discomfort it causes. It's important for children with movement problems to be positioned properly. Without good positioning, the stiffness can pull the joints out of alignment. And so when they're very early, we put them in what we call braces or orthotics. And these orthotics will maintain a proper alignment of the joint, preventing the ankles from being deformed, preventing the fingers from being deformed. The braces help with standing, balance and overall mobility. If you start from toe upwards, you have what we call ankle foot orthosis. AFO is the quick acronym. You have orthosis or braces that includes the knee, ankle foot orthosis, that allows for stability. You have some that we use at the hip to keep the hip apart. We use some at the elbows as well or the wrists, the so wrist orthosis. Some patients may require spine orthosis. Those are not usually used in the neuromuscular children, meaning the children's cerebral palsy and weakness. And 
if they are able to stand and balance, they get walkers to ambulate or wheelchairs so the parents and care caregivers can carry them around comfortably. There are several risk factors for cerebral palsy. The risk factors include poor um, antenatal care. It also includes children that are born very young, premature delivery, less than 28 weeks because the brain is very, very um, delicate and any changes in oxygenation can affect the brain. Low birth weight as well when children are born very low. Uh, you know, different types of infections can cause it. And even after delivery, there's the risk from head injury and infections such as meningitis and jaundice, among other things. Doctors say the risk of developing cerebral palsy can be minimized. Parents need to know that you must have proper antenatal care, proper enough to take the, the pregnancy to full term, to 40 weeks, so the child's brain and body and blood vessels can develop properly. Uh, in addition to that, good health care condition for the mother and delivery, you know, uh, safe delivery is always important and uh, postnatally, meaning after they are delivered, is to ensure that the children are healthy, they get their vaccinations, they're not exposed to any infection, there's no trauma to the brain, uh, environment is safe so you don't have exposure to chemicals that can also cause it or to accidents or near drowning and stuff like that. Children's exposure to toxic chemicals such as paints with lead in them, herbicides, pesticides or household chemicals with pungent odors, either ingested or inhaled, can cause brain damage and must be avoided. Our best option for good health is always prevention. But that aside, effective curative measures offer hope and great joy. We do have children walking who weren't able to walk before. We do have children sitting who couldn't sit before. I had a patient once where the legs were crossed, scissors, scissors do we call it, where the legs were scissors at the hips and the mother wasn't able to clean her properly or carry her. So when she used to carry, she used to carry her in the front. So we injected between the legs and she came out. She was very happy. I'm like, why are you so happy? She's like, me can lap her now. I said, what do you mean by that? Because we injected between the legs, she could open the legs so she could now carry her on the side, one foot in the front, one in the back, and the bag. We hear of another story from Aunt Avia, who cares for her nephew, Emilio. His name is Emilio Morris. He's 12 years old. At one point, his foot was like, turning like this. So now the car sit at the Bustamante, it said come back around straight. So now he's wearing our braces. At one point he used to creep, but now he doesn't creep. At one point his knee was very tight, but now it's not so tight. Things kind of better now, being that he get injection, he used to get fizzy. They want him to stand up in the brace. Keneal Baker is 13 years old. He was born with cerebral palsy low motor skills. Basically, he cannot walk without assistance. We have been coming to this clinic for some time now, where he has gotten injections and has done surgery, which has helped him tremendously. He could not lay on his stomach. After this, the surgery, he was able to lay on his stomach and turn over, roll over. He is able to stretch out his, his hands and legs. And for bathing him, it has been, it has been made much easier for caring for him. They could not feed himself, he's trying to feed himself now. Well, you can leave him with food and he will feed himself. He's a very happy child. And we have good support from family and friends. And thank God we do. He's our joy. He's our joy. Don't let the heat beat you down. Extremely hot days can affect your health, causing heat stress and heat stroke. Protect yourself. Seek sheltering from the sun and limit outdoor activities to mornings and evenings. Wear light-colored, loose-fitting, breathable fabrics. Hydrate with cool water and avoid sweetened drinks and beverages that contain alcohol. Don't let the heat beat you down. Most of us know pumpkin is good when eaten boiled and, of course, a staple in our soups. But it's far more versatile than that. 
Journey with us to St. Andrew as farmers and others display the many ways you can enjoy pumpkin. This is the Stony Hill Development Era Committee Pumpkin Festival. I'm very excited about um, this pumpkin something here happening at, at Gold, in Golden Spring and we have a, a variety of um, farmers group from um, the West Rural area coming out. He had a festival actually last year, coffee. And what I what they said, what the group said to me when I met with them the last time, the DAC, they mentioned, Miss, we did coffee last year. Let us try something new. There's a lot of pumpkin in the area. This area, West Rural St. Andrew, a lot of farmers are within this community. The man in the CDC is a new entity in our community. We saw the need for some community development and um, we partner with the SDC to form this group. We're one year old. I am very proud of our pumpkin cheesecake. Apart from our pumpkin cheesecake, we have a pumpkin chutney. It's similar to a, a salsa dip. We have our pumpkin pudding, we have a pumpkin bread, we have a pumpkin fruit cake, we have pumpkin chips, we have a pumpkin punch, we have a lot of things on um, offering today. We also have a farmer's market where we're selling pumpkins as you can see and we have food being done on display right now for everybody to enjoy. The pumpkin selfish fritters, we made a flour from the grounded pumpkin and I think that is the number one seller today. Mount James has on display pumpkin coffee, we have a pumpkin rum cream, we have pumpkin chutney, we have a pumpkin oatmeal cookie with walnut and raisin, we have pumpkin spread, we have pumpkin fruit cake, we have a pumpkin freshener and other products. We have a pumpkin hot sauce. Sony Hill has, uh, we have a pumpkin rock cake, we have a pumpkin punch, we have pumpkin fritters, we have pumpkin cake, we have pumpkin dukuno, and we also have pumpkin pie. And we also have a pumpkin ketchup. SDC is one of the one of the entities that we work with because as a social service officer of the parish, I work with a number of groups to utilize what we grow. You can utilize the pumpkin in another number of ways. You can make your soups, you can make your jams, you can make your cakes, you can make drink, different drinks. Person's talking about going healthy. It is one of the cheaper vegetables that you can utilize to get your nutrients. And in terms of diet, person's talking about um, eating properly now and not consuming the whole of cholesterol, the pumpkin fits right in there. I love pumpkin. I mean, pumpkin is one of the things we give to babies from their babies that they actually um, they're not squeamish about. I love it and so it's not something that people would shy away from so I think it's a good thing to actually use um, in pretty much anything. A lot of Jamaicans love pumpkin soup. One of the aim of this, this activity is to see how we can help communities to generate some sort of income. Help th they have the products in the community, how is it now that they can use this product now as a sort of local economic initiative. And this activity that we are having here today, it falls under our local economic development support program. The food is good. It's exciting. I'm, I'm quite, um, I was impressed really when I saw all the displays of the different, of the various pumpkin, what pumpkin can make. I like the pumpkin juice. I like the different kind of pumpkin treats. The rock cake was good. And now I'm having a pumpkin soup. The first coming to a pumpkin show, it's exciting, it's informative, and it's creative. It's nice being here. Food's good. I had the pumpkin rum down with the salad, and I also had the pumpkin cheesecake. That was really good. I suggest you people to try. It's a fruit. Actually, when I was doing the concept document for this, and somebody asked, is this a fruit or a vegetable? And I went and I did my own research, and it's actually a fruit. It may be a fruit, but we, we use it as a vegetable. We utilize it as a vegetable. So um, how somebody eats, say, a mango, is not how they would utilize a pumpkin. Pumpkin is a fruit. Yes, it's a fruit. 
It is a fruit. This event would not have been possible without our sponsors, the Social Development Commission, of course, and the business, the various business places within the development area, the Member of Parliament, Mrs. Judith Cuthbert Flint, and the Councillor Tosha Shrop. And of course, the eight communities that are represented here today. I applaud SDC for partnering with the farmers in West Rural St. Andrew. Traffic lights does not get hurt and the tears start cry save a life for the kids for you and I save kids lives Make the road safe whether day or night for pedestrians passengers cars and bikes save a life for the kids for you and I save kids lives Hey man, it's our job to keep the road them safe and protect yeah, yeah. and the youth them so we know them safe and up here the road road no race, no matter with the speed in case, make peace and check your light them and your tires and brakes, riders and the pillions who left the helmet, I put on the cell phone, no say no taste, no matter what color they find your place. When you're on the road, take your time. Good. I beg you obey the road signs back good I put the young ones in a car seat all good And everybody drive good I walk good I we say young and old I beg you cast good Remember the dark clothes at night that is not good From the way you use up the sidewalk is all good When you're on the road We've come to the close of Jamaica Magazine, but only for today. We hope you've been enlightened and ask that you join us again tomorrow for more. Until then, continue to watch these and other programs by logging on to our website, jis.gov.jm, or subscribing to our YouTube channel. You may also find us on all the major social media platforms. On behalf of the entire production team here at the JIS, I am Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.